Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Alien vs. Predator Galaxy podcast. This is episode 75, and I'm your usual host, Aaron Percival, or as I go by on the uh, website, Corporal Hicks. Joining me is usual cohort and partner in crime, Ridgetop, a.k.a. Adam Zeller. Hello again, everyone. And for this episode, we're joined by two special guests who you've probably seen in a film that's come out recently. Um, <laughs> You know, they, they had a big part of that, and they, they've been quite elusive. They've been cloaked, they've been hiding, we had to chase them down with specialised predator killer gear. <laughs> uh, so, if that isn't obvious enough, we're talking to the uh, people responsible for bringing the predator to life in the uh, last film. Um, welcome to the show, Brian Prince. Hello, nice to be here. How you doing? And Kyle Strauss. Hello! And after half an hour or so of wasting their time with technical difficulties, we are, <laughs> we are ready to crack on. So, before we do start uh, nerding out, thank you for you know taking the time out of your day to join a bunch of uh, geeks online and talk Predator. Uh, but before we get there, you know, uh, if you could just give us a brief um, intro of you know who you are, what you did in the Predator, and what you do outside of being um, you know intergalactic hunters. So, Brian, start us off. Yeah, of course. Um, What's up? My name is Brian Prince. I play the Fugitive Predator in the movie The Predator. I also played one of the Emissaries, which we will not (laughs) see, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, I uh, have a stunts background. I've been doing stunt work in film and TV for about three to four years. I still consider myself pretty much a novice in it. I've been doing parkour for 10 years. I am probably the world's tallest parkour athlete, but uh, who's to say? Outside of that, I'm an illustrator. I went to Savannah College of Art and Design for sequential art, so I primarily work in comics, storyboarding, and character design. Worked a little bit on indie games, freelance artwork, currently writing and drawing my own graphic novel. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's who I am. <laughs> I'm six feet, nine and a half inches tall, in case everyone wants to know. <laughs> so you, you get around a bit. Yeah, yeah, I, I do a lot of things. <laughs> I don't know how to not do them. <laughs> so, uh, so, Kyle, do you want to try and one-up that? Well, <laughs> uh, hello, my name's Kyle Strouts. In the movie, I play also uh, one of the emissaries you may never see. Uh, and I play the upgrade predator. I did most of the proxy work, except for the stuff in the uh, third act. I also did some of the scenes of the fugitive predator when uh, Brian was... Uh, working on the same day um my history i've been an actor for about 10 years uh, a trained actor for about 10 years i've been a, a dancer in a style called popping uh for probably 14 years i am also a certified double bachelor teacher i was teaching for a little bit and um yeah before that i was a professional lacrosse player yeah so there's a there's a lot of uh things that have led up to where i'm at now uh and so, yeah, I think it's you, you're it. both you both athletes, then, aren't you? Didn't Brian? Didn't you also do basketball or something? Did I read that earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played basketball pretty much my entire childhood. Um, yeah, I come from a tall basketball family, so um, it was just a thing we did. Um, I stopped playing around eighteen, nineteen when I went to college. Um, because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at basketball, or at least I was. I just never loved it. Um, and so I wanted to. I wanted to do something I loved, you know, because it's when you see people who have that thing that they do and they, they love doing it. Like, I, I knew that I never felt like that with the sport of basketball. So kind of took a conscious choice to step away from it and kind of pursue my own, like, wants. And, and that's actually what led me to parkour very soon after. And then as soon as I started doing that, I just fell in love with it. Never imagined it would pay off in the way it did. Uh, doing parkour, like I said, for 10 years now in a parkour gym right now in Vancouver where, I, where I'm recording this. <laughs> yeah. So it's t- taken me all over the country, made me friends that I never thought I'd meet and it's gotten me opportunities I never thought I'd have. Well, we kind of um, have a small tradition on the podcast when we have special guests on. And that is we like to ask him about the first time they ever uh, experienced the franchise they've become involved with. So do you both remember the first time you ever encountered the predator? I was born in 83. So it was about 1990. Uh, when I first had the experience, and and since then I've watched it, no joke, probably two hundred times. It's an obscene number. Um, also, you know, when you when I got the job, I was like, okay, it's time to just go crazy and watch all of these over and over and over. But the first time was with my oldest brother, and I was watching it um, at his friend's house, 
because they were watching in the basement on this little shitty, like, tiny TV screen. Um, and it was on VHS. And, yeah, I remember being terrified. I remember that uh, the fact that it could go invisible, I remember that stuck with me as a child. <laughs> stuck with me i'm like well what if i'm in my house and he's standing at my doorway and i used to i used to wake up in the middle of the night and actually go is he standing in my room right now (laughs) he actually could be standing at the end of my bed and he could kill me and i wouldn't know it and i had these crazy thoughts but then i became obsessed with that and i was like oh well imagine if i was a predator and i people at school with my if i was invisible so you know you get a little crazy when you're a kid but i definitely remember the experience it was in my older friend's basement on this really ghetto 70s couch kind of <laughs> crunched up all close together staring at it and you know like the little poopy speakers were pumping it up but we had it blasting and uh yeah i remember being terrified and excited at the same time that's that's interesting because i i came into the sort of series with aliens first and aliens terrified me you know that horror was what led to me being fascinated with it and i came to predator later and i never found predator to be that scary so yeah, I love that. that that's that's really, that's that's really sort of interesting mirror of my experience there. Brian, what about you? Yeah, yeah. For me, um, character has always always kind of been there for me. Uh, I don't remember the first time I was like, "That's Predator." Ah, I was just was like, like growing up, kind of right alongside with you know like Batman and Spider Man. I just the Predator always was a character that I I that it existed in my universe and I always thought it was really cool. Mostly from like the visual of the character. You know, I had a plasma cannon on his shoulder, long dreadlocks and an awesome mask. Like I just always thought the character was really badass and like very iconic. You know? So yeah, it's I don't remember the exact moment, but I do know the character's always kind of been there for me for sure. And which of the films would you say is your guys' favorite? Um my favorite is a t- it's a toss up between um Predators and uh, the first Predator, uh, the first one, just because you know it's, it's the first one. <laughs> it has so many good moments and one-liners in it. Uh, it's such good characters. But I really liked a lot of the things they tried to do with Predators. Specifically, I loved like the samurai showdown <laughs> between that uh, that one Predator and then the uh, the Yakuza guy. I love that moment so much because it was like a callback to to Billy in the first one, but then also it like carries through. It's just really cool. Billy, Billy. <laughs> um... I actually have a very similar opinion to Brian on that. I, I really liked the first one because it is the first one. And I liked that the the Predator was kind of like Jaws in the sense that you don't really see him as much. And so when you do see him, he's either wrecking shit, blowing shit up, or doing something really, really detailed. Like it reminds me of the part when he's up in the tree and he, and he uses that little kit to mm-hmm. open it up. For how he's an alien, it, there was a lot of humanity in that moment. Whereas in Predator, there wasn't any intimate moments like that, but I like the stuff like the samurai showdown was just so cool and so yeah. sim- like sim- scene, but said so much without having to show him do crazy moves. But yeah, it, it's a, it's a toss up. But I, I I think I would lean a tiny bit more on the original just because I like those smaller moments. Okay, it's always good to hear predators getting some love. As Anne and I both think that's kind of an underrated one. Mm. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. <laughs> Is is there a particular design or performance um, from any of the other films that we that you would say is your favorite? I mean, honestly, the, he's Kevin in the original, just because he really set the pace for it. Yeah, I, I would say Kevin in the original, also because it was when the fact there was nothing preceding that he ha- probably had no idea. He just kind of made some stuff up and what he thought was right, and then I'm sure he talked to you know the director would ask him to do some stuff. But I like the fact that it was the first time. And so his performance was something that was coming from like a self-inspired feeling of like, okay, well, what is this guy? How is he going to move? How is he going to, you know, like when he first did that roar with his arms out, I, I really would love to know the answer. Uh, did he just pick that up? Did they just go, okay, roar now, do something scary? <laughs> or were they like, hey, put your arms out, crouch down, look forward and, and go, ah, you know? Mm-hmm. So there's something really, uh, yeah. Yeah, and like I'm coming from the actor mode, so I think that there's something really cool about your intuitive sense on, on what draws you to make a character do what it does. So I would say the first one. The okay, first one. well thought out <laughs> response to that one. Uh, but, but let's talk about your film then. Um, let's talk about The Predator. I'm always curious to hear about what people's experiences are with actually getting you know the gig in the first place. Um, so, you know, what was the casting process like for The Predator? 
<laughs> this is funny because we have two entirely different stories. Um, Cal, I think it's going to be appropriate for you actually to go first on this one. Okay. Um, so the casting process for me was, uh, as I said, before, there was that top hundred I got thrown into, and they pretty much would email me weekly and say, hey, you've made the top 75. Hey, you're in the top 50. <laughs> and I'm thinking, sitting here going, oh, you know, like how cool would that be if I got the chance to like just audition for something this big? And, and then it was like, okay, you're top 25. And at about top 15, they said, send us everything you've ever done, including my university degrees. Like they wanted to see everything I've ever done in my life before they made these decisions. And then one day I call and they said, hey, Kyle, yeah, you've made the, t- you've made the top five in North America. I was like, what? Like, yeah, you're, we're, you're flying to Los Angeles in one week to do an, a six hour audition. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. So for that next week, I was in the gym every single day and I was literally watching the movie every day and writing notes on what I wanted to do. Because they said, OK, you can come with a presentation of how you want to do the character. Well, I wrote a little book. I have a little book in my room right now that has pictures of how I fought, what my weapons look like, what my moves were, his history, why he had scars. Like I just made up a full character because I was like, fuck it. This is the time to go to that level. Obviously, I want this up, so I'm gonna go to that. Then when they flew me out, I went to the, you know, we went to, but we I didn't really see any of the other performers. And when we got to the place where we did the audition, I remember walking in. Well, I tell Brian this all the time. I walked in and I saw this black dude just flying (laughs) this parkour gym, and I went, "Fuck you!" That's my competition right there. This guy, this guy, his, his movement was so beautiful. I was just like, "Yep." This is it. And so the process of the audition, do you want to hear the process of the audition? I can. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. It was split into three parts. Uh, One of the parts was a a video portion and they pretty much kind of sat us in front of a camera and said, well, why do you think you should be the predator and what are you going to bring to the table? Uh, I pretty much just whipped out my little book and I put it by my face and I was flipping pages and just telling stories (laughs) for that portion. And and I think, I think the draw was that because of my background, why I got to that top five is being six foot nine, there's, I don't see very many six foot nine actors, like not guys that just stand there and look imposing, but people who like have that meat. And because my dance background popping is very isolated, like it does a lot of really isolated movements. I think they saw potential there. So the portion was where like, I think the meat of the performance happened was the, they said, okay, run through this parkour course or this gym as your character. And they said, okay, you can start up here. We want you to end here, but everything you do in between is up to you. And they made all of the other actors go outside. So no one could copy each other's performance for my performance. I, I don't really talk about it with many people, but the first thing I did was I dropped, well, we all had to drop to this 12 foot hole onto a pad. And I remember dropping down under the pad and it took me a good 30 seconds to get up because I kind of split my legs open and slowly went like Shh, and looked up, looked around, like just in silence. And it was a really special part of my performance that I really loved. But then from there, you know, I kind of like scanned around and made a bunch of weird sounds with my mouth and looked like a weirdo <laughs> um, and, and did some attack moves, spins and, and I'd swing off the bars and jump through holes and did like a a little like side 360 off the wall into like a strike. And then the third portion of the audition was a wire work. And I remember doing the wire work. We're all kind of standing there. Who wants to go first? And I'm like, me. And all the other guys look at me kind of like, fuck you. (laughs) And I remember looking at them and kind of being like, are you guys cool with that? And everyone just kind of took about five seconds of just like, yeah, okay. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and in my head, it was like, I'm yeah, gonna sure we did, Kyle. Sure we yeah. did. <laughs> in my head, it was like, my making was like, I want to set the bar or fuck up with glory. That was my my thought at the time. And so they had us do, uh, you know, front flips, back flips, like sprinting jump, jump up in the air, do a back flip, and land 25 feet behind you. And then there was one where we did this running dash onto a ledge, and then we had to like jump backwards and do these really high flying moves so that was the the rough outline of how it went down for me right yeah the um, so yeah i'm glad you went into detail next saves me a lot <laughs> explaining things but so my experience is like entirely different because so i was working in seattle at a parkour gym called parkour visions and i was there for about a year uh 
uh, 10 months or so. Um, great, great place, great people. I really liked the job. But yeah, I just was doing parkour and doing artwork on the side. That's all I was doing. Uh, I had moved from Atlanta where I had had most of the stunt opportunities that I had before that. So I wasn't really expecting any work at the time. Um, I was just kind of taking a year to do my own thing. And then, um, yeah, just one day I get a call from the stunt coordinator, Lance Gilbert. And he just called me and he was like, are you really like six, nine, six, ten, and do parkour? And I was like, yeah, yeah, who's this? <laughs> and then uh, he was like, Lance Gilbert, I'm stunt coordinator. And he explained, him, uh, explained what he was doing, why he was calling me, and then essentially asked me for my information, uh, which is pretty standard with stunt work. You, you, you know, you get a call and then you send them your your resume, headshot, um, and uh, you know a reel if you have it, some selfies of what you look like on that exact day. So I sent him that information, and then he got back to me very soon. He was like, yeah, I, you know, we like I want to I want to get you in for this audition for the new Predator movie, and I was like, oh, okay, wow, uh, sure. <laughs> You know, I got an email back later and they're like, yeah, we're flying you to L.A. next week. So kind of what Kyle was saying with like the 100 down to 50, that I didn't even know about any of that. Um, I was just in Seattle working my job. <laughs> and then um, the uh, yeah, I went I went to L.A. a week later and they flew me out for the audition. And uh, it's kind of like there's zero, zero part of me that expected to get this job. And I, I don't mean that negatively. I just was like, <laughs> no, that's not you can't. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't. You can't just like get a call in a week and go be a predator. That's not a thing. <laughs> so I went in literally not expecting anything, and that's that ended up helping me more than anything else because I just looked at the whole thing as a win-win. Um, I got to go to LA for a few days. The audition was at Tempest Free Running Academy, which is a parkour gym in the valley in outside of LA, and I've always wanted to go there. So I was like, oh, you know. Win win. This is great. And so, uh, you know, we I showed up to the audition. Yeah, it was Kyle and three other guys that were roughly our same height and same deal. They like, you know, got us on video. Like, what are you bringing to the table? <laughs> that was all awkward. Like, oh, uh, I do parkour. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even have that much to say. I remember. I remember like all the other guys had all this stuff to say, and I was like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, because <laughs> um, I, I didn't like talking about myself very long, uh, but. So then we did the audition, and what really helped with that is um, a bunch of good friends of mine run the Sport Parkour League. Essentially, they run parkour competitions all over the country, and one of the formats is the style format. And the way that they do it is you start in a spot, and then you you can end in a certain area, and you have to interact with a certain amount of obstacles throughout the competition or throughout the throughout the course. And so when they were like, okay, so for the audition, you're going to start here and end here <laughs> and kind of do whatever you want in the middle. I was like, oh, it's just like, it's just like a style comp. I can do that. And so same thing. I was like, well, I'm not going to get this gig. <laughs> um, and it was parkour that got me here. So I'm just going to quickly come up with a parkour line, but I'm going to mix it in with a, um, a, like this creature movement, this like hunting, like, thing so what i what i really wanted was like i kind of tried to emulate like a hunting dog it's like moving slowly and then it would like peek its ears and thing and then scatter over to an area and then slow down and so I, I picked the points that i wanted to go through and then between the points i just decided like okay what you know what movement could i do here what movement could i do here and so i ended up putting together something with some like reverse step vaults where i'd be going going backwards while looking forwards i had a few rolls and i had like a roll or two in there i did like some swinging on the bar some some perching and yeah then that was that was really fun actually to put together and it just felt felt really in my element on it and then after that we did um the the work that kyle had mentioned earlier and yeah same deal i was like uh i'd never been on a wire before and so it was really tough for me to go so kyle went first i never like going first i always like going third to fourth <laughs> i never want to go first because like i my body wants to go first but then i get like like too anxious about it and then it just falls apart when i went i just was like okay i can do backflips so i guess i'll just do that but then i like it was definitely tough because uh, of the wire portion of it but as long as i avoided the wires once i started realizing how to avoid the wires and work with the rigor is better than like I was able to get around and do it. But yeah, essentially that was the whole audition process for me. Uh, once, once you both got your roles, uh, what sort of preparation did you do for the film? I remember seeing pictures of you both in the gym, so I assume you guys did plenty of physical training, but did you also go back and kind of dissect the performances of the previous actors like Kevin Peter Hall or Ian White or Brian Steele from the other movies? Yeah, for me, I, I definitely did, but you know, probably unpopular truth. I didn't do it too much. I didn't want to just copy. 
things. And so I actually found myself not looking at a lot of things too much because I know me, like if I'm going to, if I look at something too much, I'm just going to think about it a lot. And then that becomes the norm of it. And like, if I'm not doing that, then I feel like I'm doing something wrong. So one thing that really helped was uh, in the prep time, you know, I learned a lot of wire work, a lot of various stunt training, you know, fighting, running, a lot of things like that. Uh, Me and Kyle got together. We did a lot of fun things where we would like, like go like walk around the room together in unison and like match each other's movements. And that was really, really cool. Um, but the thing that ended up helping me out the most was, um, so I, I'm, I'm a character designer. That's, uh, that's part of like my, what I went to school for. And so what I thought about was like, okay, well, if I was designing this character, like if someone came to me and was like, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna draw the predator for a comic, right? They're going to be like, like, how would I approach that project? And so I, I made a list of that, of how I would design any other character where I was like, what attributes are strong about this character? What shapes really sell the character you know what what physical feature uh features are going to be like the most predominant and so in doing that i kind of found other uh characters that i was inspired by other fictional characters that weren't just the predator because obviously the predator was on that list but you know i was looking at characters like the hulk um juggernaut one one big one that ended up sticking with me was uh, kratos from god of war so i'm a huge fan of the god of war series and i always loved kratos as a character design you know he's eight feet tall his chest is always out he does not look backwards he always looks forwards and and there was a lot of features there that i was like oh i like this i want to bring this to what i'm doing um and so i mixed that with some of the other things that i really liked from kevin's performances and from ian's performances and i tried to kind of create this blend of all of those things together um and that's what i ended up mostly putting together for my performance i vaguely remember reading that you listened to music as well yeah yeah every day when i was suiting up i actually was listening to the god of war soundtrack and uh from god of war 3 because it was you know, when when I was looking at it from just a stunts thing, it was it was hard to kind of get into character. But it was actually something that Alex Gillis told me where he was like, you know, watching Ian and the other guys do it. It's more of a dance than anything else. And when he told me that, I was like, oh, wow, that makes so much sense. And so I would just listen to this music that would kind of put me in the mindset of the character. Um, like I had a whole playlist on my Spotify <laughs> and and then I would like basically just start acting while listening to the music in a dance kind of way to kind of just put me into that zone okay cool kyle what about you all right yeah so yeah me and brian for how soon we do some things we i think our our prep processes are quite different Uh, my prep for the film was i went and watched the films (laughs) and idea that okay i want to see what these people brought to the performance and what can i bring to the performance that will stay true to what people see as characteristics of a predator but also my personal thing was like i want to bring a new personality to the predator i want to like how every human has a personality you know i'm kyle he's brian you know you, we all have our identities i wanted to bring like an identity of a predator that that was unique but still felt true to that like their their lore um, so a lot of mine was when I'd watch the films, I watched, I looked at a lot of the acting nuances. So I would look at what did he do with his, what did he do with his fingers? What did he do when he, when he heard a sound? Did he snap his head? Did he turn his head slow? Did he, did he like puff up his chest? Um, so I would look at a lot of like the small physical nuances and relating to Brian's last note about dance, because I've been dancing for so long. That was where a lot of my... A lot of my character work in general from the other performances I've done outside of Predator have to do very tightly to dance because it's so much a dance because you're in a suit with a helmet on and gloves on and all these things that, you know, when it comes time to play, you have to kind of have a preconceived set of feelings and emotions to, to bring that thing to life. And so I would listen to music similarly, but I would listen to Hans Zimmer because I wanted that. Very, and because I remember when he showed me the God of War soundtrack, I was like, "Holy shit! Like this is something I could listen to." Because it reminds me of um, Hans Zimmer, because it's like the epic buildup and and that very orchestral feeling. Because I felt like we were doing something epic like that. Mm-hmm. As for the physical training, I give uh, a shout out to Brian A. Prince for introducing me to parkour, um, <laughs> because I'd always been a, a mover and a physical person, but I've never seen someone in my height range do things like that so as soon as i saw him do that the audition i was in vancouver i was going to origins parkour shout out origins parkour to uh train 
So I would just, I was trying to foundationally learn like how to climb better, how to move more efficiently, how to move smoother, how to move lighter. Um, and anytime Brian came through town, we were, you know, going over notes on like, okay, like how can we, how can we like step this game up? Because Kevin and Ian, you know what I mean? Like they, they set the foundation they set the foundation for, for where the characters started. I was like, how can we, as movers, bring something new to these characters? And that was really, you know, the, the seed that was planted where we started. And so we would go like, okay, well, maybe, you know, the emissaries, which I hope someday people see. I, I really wanted my character, he was more of a wily character, like more of a shit disturber than like the proud stand up tall. And, and so I like... Yeah, that's why I really want to see it. We never really got to see any of the footage um, that they showed at the test screening before they changed it. But I think there was a lot of a lot of like my character, the stuff that I was really like hustling on, I put into that character. But yeah, so tying back to that, I think my training regime was also an endurance thing. I wanted to make sure that my endurance was ready to do the suit work because I've done suit work before. I, I knew what was going to be asked, of, but I've never done it where I'm 100% covered. So hands, feet, body head and you can barely see barely breathe um, i knew that that was going to be uh, really challenging so i did a lot of i do a lot of meditation in my my regular life anyways but i did a lot of meditation to be ready for the challenge that is performing while completely encumbered well speaking of the you know speaking of the suits then i did want to ask you both what it was like you know performing inside those i mean we we spoke to ian uh, foyer in the past who um who worked on Requiem um, when uh, when Ian White wasn't able to. And he talked very specifically about how it was really taxing mentally because, you know, like you said, it was it was all enclosed and claustrophobic. And Brian, God, we even heard some reports that you were actually passing out on set in the suit. So, Oh, yeah. No, I definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what, what no, was that tell, like? Tell that yeah, story, it's... baby. So the um I don't know it's 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 the most I'm trying to figure out the word this it's it's definitely the hardest thing I've ever done in my life was wearing that suit and then doing stuff like when you're wearing the suit if you're just standing there you're working so like the animatronic head that I did the entire like uh, lab scene with it's eleven pounds in the back of your head right so it's just trying to pull your head backwards and you're you're fighting just to keep your head level right and so it's kind of like that all over like just to lift the arm you're 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 lifting you're using all of your arm muscles to lift it just to walk around flexing everything to carry that tank around and then on top of that you know you're running you're fighting you're jumping (laughs) and uh and it's tough because it's this mix of like it's exciting it's super awesome like you know you walk out of the tent and then everyone sees you and freaks out it's like oh my god and like you just you push into it and you become that character and it's super super exhilarating but at the same time, you have to be your voice. You have to tell people like, hey, I'm getting really tired <laughs> because all they see is they see the predator. They don't see a person <laughs> that's, that's maybe, you know, out of sweat. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was definitely like a really hard adaption process. I mean, the stunt team, I trained with them for four weeks before we started shooting and we had me learning all my stuff in a wetsuit just to get used to like the sweat and the the restriction of the movement and as helpful as that was even that just didn't even come close to actually wearing the suit mainly for stunt days because um so for for stunt heavy days we did a lot of wire work like a lot of wire work for this film and so for for wire stunts you wear something called a, a jerk vest or a harness and it has all of these daisy loops all over it that people that you can like hook different pinpoints to um so usually typically for wire stunts the, the vest gets t- cinched up right before you do the take. So you're about to do a take, you cinch it all up, you get wired, you get hooked in, and then you your your takes over and over and over again. And wire work by itself, mentally taxing and physically exhausting. So in the Predator suit, I had to cinch up the harness before putting the suit on. So I'm already full cinched up. I'm like... I'm like in a corset basically and it's squeezing me fully and then I had to put on the the suit and then I had to be in that suit for about six to eight hours depending on how long we were going and it was very very painful (laughs) but you know you endure that's you know it's, it's the work um and so on days like that where I'm wearing the hardest and then on top of that I had to like run or jump and stuff like that that was just like like words can't explain how 
tremendously difficult those days were. But, you know, you, you find a happy place. You find a way to keep yourself motivated and like calm. Like as Kyle was saying, I definitely practiced a lot of meditation habits. Um, I could I would just be sitting there, you know, in my own spot in my head. People on set would walk by and wave and I wouldn't even see them because <laughs> I would have to just be in this mental space of like, I'm fine, I'm chill, I'm here. Wow, um, failed. Yeah, yeah. As for that day where I passed out, yeah, I mean, we were walking up. We were doing this big scene as the emissaries, which no one will see. <laughs> and we were walking up into the spaceship and we just did it a bunch of different times. And um, essentially, usually like when they call cut, there's there's immediately fans on us just because like like we can't really even breathe in the masks or the head. Um, that's why I tell people like it's like any scene that I, I'm doing with the with the battle mask on, I can't see like it's the, the, the goggles would fog up immediately. So there's like that iconic scene where I'm holding up Quinn McKenna, like Boyd Holbrook's character, I'm holding him up against the wall. When I had to come around him and grab him by the throat, that was basically like me, we had to like rehearse that to the point where I could do it with my eyes closed because I could barely see. So uh, yeah, a lot of sensory like <laughs> deprivation. But yeah, you know that day where I passed out, we just we we were going and going and going and going really hard and just like I was like, no, nah, I feel great. Let's do it. I feel fine. I feel fine. <laughs> and then. And then we kept going and we get to like that last take and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is going on. I was like, I'm going up this hill. I'm going to need a break after to the top. And I was like, yeah, I just need like one deep breath and I'll be fine. And then I'm like on the floor and <laughs> everyone's like trying to get my head off. And I'm like, oh, what oh, happened? Because <laughs> that's the thing is like I, I needed to know where my limit was and I found it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Was, was that early on or was that? Uh, it's about like halfway maybe. Yeah. It was a good day. <laughs> <laughs> about you, Carl, how did you uh, find working in there? Uh, so, like I said, I did uh, I did this movie. Uh, I actually got to work with Robert England. Oh, um, yes, yes. The, it was a horror yeah. thing, weren't it? Yeah, it was a horror thing, which, you know, I, I don't think it turned out, <laughs> the final product didn't turn out like how we all wanted it to, but, you know, that's film. But uh, I wore a suit that was, like, I had arms and a head and some similar to, like, the Predator stuff, but I had nothing on my legs and i remember that was like okay this, this is tough but i can handle this with predator it wasn't just that it was covering everything it was also the way the suit is built because we had them custom molded to our bodies when we would stand there if you didn't move and you had your hands at your side it was almost fine it was almost like a meditative thing but as soon as you like put your hands out sideways or hands up straight it was like doing restrictive workout like as if you were picking up a 10 pound weight and just holding it there so it was anytime you did any move like and said it was it was very taxing so when we had to do there was this scene where we had to walk into it was actually the scene where brian passed out but it, it was on a day where we were a lot of movement and a lot of moving we had to walk into the entrance of the alien ship and it was kind of like the big reveal where the whole loonies gang sees us and um it was this really cool kind of intro to the like really seeing the emissaries in full on and we had to walk up these stairs and up the ramp and then pretty much up about a two foot gap with our foot and then push up. So it's pretty much like a workout. And we did it about 10 times in a row. And that was the, uh, that was actually where it happened is because um, doing suit work, you kind of have to find your flow and you have to communicate exactly where you're at. And, you know, the production is always trying to get as much done as possible because that's just, you know, the way it goes. And they're going, okay, well, let's shoot, let's shoot, let's go. Let's keep the heads on. Actually, guys, we need, we're going to shoot soon and we're just doing the next setup. So just keep the heads on. And there was there was that time I think we had it on for like an hour or something like that. And when it's on, all of the heat in your body is trying to exit out your hands and your head. So when it can't do that, it's coming out the only place exposed to air. And that was like our mouth, like right where the face was. So the heat would build up and the breath would build up. And so that one, we really found the limits of what was possible because I think me and Brian were really, you know, both strong performers and, and, and proficient athletes in that sense. And it was taxing both of us to the maximum. Like it was really, really, really difficult because we had to always be like water, water. And it's really, you know, the team's there to help you. It's annoying when you have to keep saying, hey, guys, can you please just come over with the fan and just stand here and blow it in my face for, you know, 40 minutes straight? Um, because as soon as you walk away, we heat up to the point where, you know, it's hard to see properly. So eventually they had some systems in place where we did this thing called the cool suit, which would go underneath the suit. And it was like a vest. And it had little wires going through it where you could be sit down and the little plug would come out the side of your leg and they would plug you into an actual cooler full of ice and water <laughs> and it would pump in ice water. 
Ah, so water and, cooler and under the costume yeah, so, then. Yeah, so that's what. So we would sit down in the chair. They plug us into the cool suit. They'd have two people on each fans, and we would just sit there in silence and just breathe and prepare. So eventually, they got good at um, letting us have the heads off until five minutes before shooting, and they would go, "Okay, guys, heads on," and the heads would come on. We'd you know we'd be pretty much shooting right away. But on that day, before we had that system in place. We were just kind of winging it depending on what was happening in the day and be like, you know, they can leave the heads on. It's fine. And we're like, no, we're heating up. Like, I'm like, Brian, you good? And, you know, we were that was the day where there was some deterioration. And and from my perspective, we walk up to the top of the thing and I look, you know, I look at Olivia in the face and I look at all the guys and I'm doing this performance. And all of a sudden I feel this whoop, and I'm like, what the fuck? And I kind of in character turn around. And I see him on the floor. There's this moment of silence that you could bite through. And I look back at all of the crew and, and, and Shane standing there. And everyone's looking. There was this silence in the air. And then, like, as if someone just clapped, everyone just exploded, running towards Brian, running. Like, oh, my God, get his helmet off. Boom. They rip off his helmet. Get Kyle out of the suit right now. Like, it just was – it got serious really quick. Mm. And the first thing Brian says, sorry, guys. <laughs> and I just burst out laughing because the only thing he could think about was like letting people down. Whereas, you know, we were being taxed and we were like, hey, guys, we're getting hot. We're getting hot. We're getting hot. And uh, yeah, so it was just really, uh, you know, I almost think that, that that had to happen to really show people how serious it is to play a character like that. And to do, you know, and by the way, make sure you're acting and make it real and sell it. Make it, you know, yeah. On top of just maintaining your sanity and 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 keeping your body temperature down and staying hydrated, making sure you go pee in between shots because no time is money. So yeah, it was it was a lot and uh, it was yeah it was I would agree with Brian. It's one of the most challenging things I've ever done. Did you guys not have the masks just velcroed on then? Were they not removable like in the originals, or was it a full head thing with the mask on? Was... I mean the 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 battle mask was well it was usually zip tied on <laughs> but it had magnets that you know the magnets worked decently but um the the battle mask could come off and that would be more or less fine it was still really hot when the heads were on like when the animatronic mandible heads were on those that was a whole process to get them on and off yeah I think I think the the in both our sakes they they molded the heads to our head so we had this little like cup inside that had a little snaps in it and you would put the head on um and it wasn't just a big floppy uh prosthetic head there was an actual cup inside that was fit to your skull shape so that when you moved the head would naturally move with you if that makes sense Mm -hmm. um but there was two different types of head there was the stunt head and there was the animatronic head and the animatronic head had all the electronics to make the mouth move so that was also another challenge is when the mouth is moving we don't hear Shane going, hey, guys, okay, we want you to do this. We hear. Yep, and, no, that's and true. So it was hard sometimes to get a performance out because someone would have to come right up to our face and go, okay, Brian or Kyle, um, okay, we want you to kind of, in this one, come in with a bit more energy. And when you swipe, make sure you change like this and do like this. And so, yeah, having the heads on was. A lot of, uh, a lot of lip reading. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of lip reading and it was, it was a full on process. Yeah. Do you guys remember the first scenes you actually worked on? Yeah. Oh, I can't forget. The uh yeah, day the first week was first week for me was the uh the school, all the stuff at the school. Uh the nights we did like fourteen days straight of night shoots. Um of the uh the first thing I did was when I was on top of the R V and I was holding Augusto Aguilera's character Nettles up by one arm. And uh, pointing to the loonies to put down their guns. That was like the first bit. And then we kind of finished that entire sequence over the next two weeks of the, uh, like the predator showing up at the school up until getting my head ripped off. First one for me was doing the upgrade stuff in that scene. And I also was, they kind of brought me in. Because a lot of the stuff that we, we worked on was, you know, we, we both wanted to have a lot of consistency with the characters. So uh, Lance brought me in to kind of, be like, okay, well, be with Brian so that everything you guys do, we can kind of stay on the same level when we go to do the other Predator stuff. And, and me and Brian, it was pretty cool, actually. We got to really be personally personalize that character because we'd be standing and Brian would jump down and be like, they'd be like, okay, Brian, want to do this? And Brian would just stop all of them and go, okay, Kyle, what did you think about that? <laughs> it was it was pretty funny because everyone would stop and, look and be like, what the hell? But I remember that first scene 
um, when he was holding up medals and there was the the whole finger pointing thing. There's a there's a whole story behind that. We did a bunch of different versions because it's just you're trying to make it look natural. And <laughs> and not I couldn't human. see. <laughs> he couldn't see his finger, so he couldn't tell what he was pointing. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was uh, the first scenes we worked on. We're all, all at the school doing the. Yeah, I mean, full full disclosure, I had a full on panic attack that night. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, that was where we became one. a team. Yeah, it was camera day one. I was super nervous. You know, like six months leading up, a month prep. You know, you put you you put the suit on, and I had the harness on the entire time, and I was in the suit at that point for like hours, and like you know. The harness restricted my breathing. I couldn't feel anything. <laughs> uh, I was in like actual pain from the harness because I wasn't used to it yet. And then they went to put the head on, and <laughs> they uh, the the mask head was messed up, so they had to, like go get another one. But so they took the stunt head, which looks like the talking head, and then like stuffed everything in, and then put the mask on and zip tied it to my face. <laughs> and I just just like the moment that zip tie went through, I just had like a trigger and i just like started freaking out but i just like i just covered it i was like no i'm good <laughs> and then i walked outside and then the, the goggles fogged up and i was just like okay this is fine this is good and so i'm up holding up nettles and like trying to point and i just like oh dude it was a mess <laughs> like like in my head like outside it was fine apparently but, like, <laughs> i can't see so like my brain's just like oh everyone's looking at me I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like sitting there doing all the points. Dane's like, oh, try it like this. And I was like, I can't see. I can't see what he wants me to do. I'm going to get fired. Like, <laughs> and we had no mics yet, so they couldn't. Yeah. Oh, that was crazy. Um, so, yeah. Sorry. Just that. Yeah. I feel like that's. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> kind of going off that moment of where the fugitive tells the group to put their weapons down and to the ground. Um, something we really liked about the Predator was that it felt like the Predators had a great sense of personality through the performance. Um, oh, so, cool. what sort of conversations yeah. did you have with Shane about that sort of thing? So, with, with the personality of the Predators, um, Shane definitely had notes. Like he was like, "Oh, you know, I, I want him to feel like this." But I mean, for the most of it, for the most part, I honestly would give most of that credit to Kyle. Honestly, um, not to say that anyone else did input but they gave us a lot of freedom to be honest they were just like you know we want you guys to kind of bring to the table what you want to do and then they would obviously stop us or tell us like no and less like that more like this but i feel like a lot of that kind of came down in the beginning when we were in prep time and kyle was like oh let's try something like this what if we did that so yeah uh, I'll, I'll just tag on to that thanks brian i really appreciate yeah, that of course. Um, yeah a lot of this and, and for all of that being said uh, I go back to anyone asking me that this was a team effort. Everything that was done, you know, for how yep. much effort or input I gave in, it was always a balanced effort between both of us because it's not something that you could do alone. It's just a crazy job. So when we were doing that prep stuff, me and Brian would hang out and I'd be like, so like, who, what, like, how can we move? How can we, you know, how can we run? How can we efficiently run? How can we, like, eye acting? We would talk about eye. I'm like, Brian, when that thing, when that camera gets close to your face, you can't be sad. You can't be, uh, you know, you can't be all of these things that we're thinking of, you know, that are happening in our moment right now. Let's just turn that shit into anchor. <laughs> and I remember when we first saw when we first saw the lab scene and it goes to that tight shot when he wakes up and wakes up. I fucking stood up in the theater. I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because because you know, for everything I said, it was Brian. Like he took those that that character and when i was watching the fugitive do stuff it was so uplifting that everything that we worked so hard to create for a personality came through because i'm reading all these reviews and going you know what for how i may or may not like the movie but man those predator stuff looked amazing that was payoff because we we both put in a lot of work and we would play together and be okay i'm the hunter now brian and i'm following the track prey. okay the prey's attacking how do we react and I'm like, yeah oh, no, yeah how do I follow you? If you're, if we're on set and you can't talk to me, how am I know to follow you? Because yes. there's a lot of physical things we could do and communicate to each other that don't need to be said. So if he turns and looks, I look, and then he looks back, and we have a moment, and then we turn and go. There's a lot of like acting. We're, I guess, yeah, we pretty much were just doing like all the acty stuff before in the prep work, which was like, how do we define the personality of who these these characters are? Yeah. Yeah, that <clears throat> that breakout sequence in the lab was was just fantastic. 
Um, so, oh, so you. you guys were given a lot of uh, freedom in terms of the personality. You were kind of developing that amongst yourselves for the Predator characters. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was yeah, hard to much. get time with Shane. To, sorry, Brian. It was hard to get time with Shane because there's so many moving parts happening at the same time. It was hard to be like, hey, Shane, let's sit down and talk. You know, He's trying to manage the entire production. So they would pretty much give us some notes. And then we were just like, you know, we were hired to do this. So we have to trust that they hired us for a reason and we're going to do our job and, and create these characters. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if this was in the script that I read, but the, um, the arms up thing in the truck, was that scripted or was that ad-libbed? I can't remember. <laughs> um, arm, might which part do you mean? The part where the thumbs up happens. Oh, and, it, that was yeah. in the script, yeah. That was in the script, yeah. That was in the original was... script, yeah. Grabbing yeah. the arm and... Fair enough. Yeah. So let's talk that fight sequence then between the fugitive and the upgrade. I mean... Okay. We've, we, you've got Brian in the suit, <laughs> and I'm assuming, uh, Kyle, you're in the stilts and the uh, the weird yeah. no-cap suit. Um, yeah. So what, what was that like to film? <laughs> That was, that was crazy because um, <laughs> yeah, it was like a lot of like, you know, we had to interact the best we could without interacting too much. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, so some miming. Um, but yeah, that was that was definitely a fun For the time. stunt pad, he had to, they had to, Brian had to actually, and what they showed in the final cut, there was way more fighting than that, which I really wish they used. There's oh, a part yeah. where Brian sprints, pretty much sprints me full speed. And they're like, okay, Kyle, hold this cushion. And I think Lance, it was kind of like a joke to him. He's like, I want to see if Brian's going to knock over Kyle. But <laughs> it, like, he would sprint in the suit and just smash into this pad to make it look like he was crashing into the upgrade. And then he you know, does a bunch of moves and the upgrade blocks. And there was way more of an interaction in terms of like fight moves. Yeah. Um, than the final showed. The final showed him kind of like swing and block. There was actually what we shot originally was Brian was running at me, and while he was running at me, he was firing a burst out of his shoulder cannon. He wasn't standing there just going, pachoom. He was running, going, pew, pew, pew. And as he was running, attacking, he's also slicing. So it was as if he was throwing everything he had at, at him in the final sequence, which I really wish I saw in the, in the, in the final product. In my head while we were doing it, I was like, this is going to look so effing cool. But there was a lot of like uh, stuff to make Brian look very uh, physical. So he would run at me and hit a pad. Or when he was doing the attacks, he had to really kind of slash upwards at me. And then I would kind of like go back. And then I would mimic the like swing to backhand him where he went flying. There's a little small note. Brian in that stunt where he gets backhanded, <laughs> in the air. A wire pulled him 18 feet in the air. And he smacked into grass, like, and under the grass, they just put a little bit of moss. But he actually flew in the air and smashed into the grass. And I remember that take. They were like, you really got to sell it. And when he did that and he hit and rolled, a bunch of the pieces flew off and broke from the armor. And he rolled, I swear, about two inches from the camera. And they actually used that shot, if you go back. Yeah, they did. When he rolls and the, everyone grabbed their hands and went, oh, shit, oh, shit, he's going to hit the camera. And he stopped. <laughs> Right yeah. at the camera, and everyone went, "Yep, that was it. That was the one." Yeah, nice. Well, because the, the first one, I hit the ground, and like I hit the ground wrong, and the the bolts that held like the the skull piece that was like attached to our head, and then like that that connected that to the rest of the head, like shattered. And all I hear is this like shattering noise, and I'm like, "Oh, I broke my neck. I'm dead." Like that's <laughs> <laughs> just like the first thing I thought it was like, "That's it. Like this is how it happens." <laughs> Yeah. And then I'm laying there and like the the part of the mask that was like falling was like stabbing me in the face. <laughs> it just it just hurt, man. Um like not like I wasn't drawing blood, but it was like it was almost just like, you know, stabbed me in the face. And then like I we we reset and they were just like, "Hey man, you got to hit your mark." And I was like, "All right. <laughs> you want me to hit my mark? I'm going to hit my fucking mark." <laughs> and so I uh the second we did it, man. I was like, I guess hype. And then, yeah, I just like yeah. took the roll. Oh, and, man. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. So, so something that's intrigued a lot of fans are those deleted emissary predators that you mentioned. Um, yeah. Do you pair portrayed both of those? And I was wondering if there's anything else you could tell us about them. And were you, you know, sad to see them go? Oh, definitely. I mean, we, uh, like, short answer, yeah. Like, <laughs> like we, like, oh, man, don't. There's so many days, guys. <laughs> so just, many days. So, like, so many, many days. So many days just got, you know, it just amounted to nothing. I mean, like, 
it's for a good reason. I'm not trying to be all like, I would have did like this. I don't feel like that at all. Whatever they did, they probably did it for a reason. I didn't see the footage and, you know, but in terms of like the performance aspect of it, man, like we, we put a lot into those, uh, to the emissaries and we had a lot of fun doing them just cause it's like exactly what Kyle was saying. Like it was like so much of the prep time we spent doing this like team oriented training and then like getting to do that, um, yeah. to actually do that together was so cool um and so yeah like it's i'm definitely excited to see him go um was there a lot of footage yes oh boy um Uh, well it's hard to say right because it's like we filmed a lot but like how many did it equate to it was it was a good chunk you know like i mean it was very action sorry can i jump in bry absolutely yeah um it was very action-packed the stuff that they did and i feel like there was a lot of subtlety more subtlety in those characters because compared to the fugitive the fugitive is essentially you see him crash you know a bunch of stuff happens and then he's escaping so you see a lot of cool things the fugitive but there was no time to really absorb hint like the character itself whereas the emissaries there was a, a few more scenes where you you it's almost like okay we're introducing you the emissaries look here they are like here's these characters doing this thing um and there we had we did this stuff on the gpv which became kind of like a meme for the production because <laughs> just a lot of things went wrong with the vehicle that they they purchased um so it had to be fixed on set and there was just a bunch of you know really tough days shooting those scenes and there was multiple bad luck. multiple multiple stunts like and some of the the stunt guys that were working with the actors like they they were falling off the, the gpv jumping on the gpv like the thing was doing stunt maneuvers there was stunts where we had a humvee blow up and flip in the air with yeah. a piston that shot it in like that was there's no cg in that thing you saw in the trailer that was yeah. a guy driving a humvee 70 kilometers an hour and it got punched by a piston in the ground and flew 30 feet in the air flipping and blew up while it was in midair it's the most incredible thing i've ever seen um and i was i was in the turret shooting at it when that <laughs> happened that's actually what sets it off but we did a lot of the team oriented predator character work was done as the emissaries because we were these two guys that were, you know, on Earth. And for all the, you know, people like, oh, but friendly predators. Yeah, they weren't friendly. They're were essentially coming to Earth to give humans a fair fight, to give them a chance to fight back. So when we do conquer them, there's honor in it. It wasn't like, oh, they're here to help pre- humans because they want to be pals. It's like, no, nah, that was never the intention from the way we interpreted the script. So even in all of the character interactions between the loonies and the predators, there was stuff that had never been done in a predator franchise that it was hard to see it go because so much work on not just our parts, but the actors and the stunt mm-hmm. team and the, and the and crew, and the yeah. crew, like everyone was putting their heart and soul into these scenes because we all knew like, Hey, we're bringing back the predator franchise. We all got to, you know, just pull up our pants and get this shit done and do it properly. Um, so I'm definitely sad to see it go because there was a lot of really, really like cool, unique, new takes on on what predators have done and what they were doing, and well, the interaction between the predators, the two that were me and Brian. Could you elaborate a bit more on the um, the unique sort of stuff? You know, or what what was in there that had not well, been done the, before? From I guess the, we're like allowed to because it's like <laughs> the whole thing got leaked, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it doesn't matter now. Um, but we, I think in the original script, the because people were looking like, oh, why don't they have shoulder cans? I think they actually got knocked off in their first iteration coming to Earth. And so what they were fighting with more of their traditional weapons, like the things that fire out of their arm, the, the, the wires and the blades and all that kind of stuff. And then they were using whatever was around, which was the human weapons. And there was a scene where I took, a, I, I come out of the turret. I actually shot the 50 caliber turret. Um, which was actually one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because they put actual 50 cal shells in it. And I went, pop, 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 pop. And that was where they were essentially um, working together to take out the upgrade. Like, this was like, this upgrade was so badass that, you know, the predators to team up with the humans because he had all these crazy beasts, with, like hunting animals with him that they've been fucking with. Like, the, you know, they showed the dogs. But they had some other stuff that they were kind the, of genetically the spy splicing. things and stuff like that. Yeah, like yeah. W- which was like a back and forth because people were, like, I don't know, but you know they were just splicing these things to be hunting animals that this this assassin would bring with him to hunt these uh, rebel predators. Um, but so there was like this full on war that was happening in these scenes where the emissaries were like, I shot a fifty cal, and then you know Brian, I think Brian at one point M sixteen or something out the front, and the I M two forty. Yeah, I pick up a gun. 
dropped an M240 and I turn and just go bah, 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 while the vehicle is driving, mind you. And I was just ripping at this thing, flying through the trees and then turning around while this thing jumps on coil and taking my blades out and just stabbing it in the brain. Like it was just really like stuff that Predator fans would have loved to see. It was really violent, really like all that character work that we put in into the training was coming out in these this this team, the, the emissary guys. Oh man, you're making me even more sad now. <laughs> yeah, imagine you're imagine you did it. It's just, yeah. it's it was, oh, it was yeah. uh, a large exhale to let that go because of how much just the whole team the whole team put into making these scenes as cool as possible. Yeah. Now you had mentioned that you don't remember it ever being called the Fugitive Predator as a nickname until you saw that online. Yeah. Were there other nicknames that it was called on set or the, any of the Predator characters? The call sheets were just, it was Predator 1 and then it was Upgrade uh, and then Emissary 1, Emissary 2. And so I didn't know what they were going to call the Predator, uh, the, the the Fugitive one. And then online people were like, oh, I love the Fugitive Predator. Da, 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 Fugitive. And I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I like that a lot. So uh, it like went with it. <laughs> Well, that that yeah. came from um, the company that make the figures. Was um, it? Okay, yeah. awesome. So he was called the Fugitive, and then the upgrade was called the Assassin. The, the Assassin, yeah, that's yeah. That, that's with some changes, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. So uh, speaking of the Assassin, um, I was just wondering if either of you knew if ADI or um, Shane Black had experimented with doing any practical suits for the upgrade Predator, or was it always going to be still some mocap and CG? <laughs> I, I I personally don't know. Um, I think it was always supposed to be CG. There was a really cool, um, what do you call it, like proxy, like stand-in yeah, mockad the that they had. Thing. Oh, that thing was really cool. Oh, thing. yeah, they, um, they, they put in the cash for that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> but yeah, Kyle, what were you going to say? Oh, yeah, I, I was just going to jump on top of that same comment. Is that uh, I remember... I remember Shane's first note to, he's like, you know what, like my big thing, cause he did a little speech at the studio and he's like, oh, yeah. I really want this to be like, I, I make films, I make them like a family and everyone working, we work together, we trust each other. And he goes, and I really want to bring this franchise back and be as practical as possible. So he wanted to use everything in his power to make every effect he could practical but for the way The Fugitive was written, it was almost impossible to get a... There's no 12-foot humans. There was, you know, even on the stilts, you couldn't be very precise with how you moved. So he said he wanted it a person in it to do the proxy for most of the work. But when The Fugitive would do something crazy like sprint, you couldn't, you know, he had to CG that. So I knew that yeah. he really well, wanted also, to be uh, practical. But... Props to TJ Storm. He's one of the other motion capture artists that did a lot yeah. of work um, in, in posts for the assassin and um yeah so i just want to throw his name out there really quick because yeah. he's awesome <laughs> so. and just for clarity's sake i don't believe either of you were involved with the major reshoots that took place correct no um no that's when i got worried <laughs> yeah because we heard about eight weeks of reshoots and neither of us were called and i was like something's happening <laughs> I was like, oh man what's going on because once you've finished a job as an actor you don't really hear anything all the production side so we were kind of inquiring like hey so i'd hit my agent and be like hey so they're not calling me for any reshoots she goes no we haven't heard anything and i was kind of like oh man what are they reshooting eight weeks that's a it's a sizable it's a, chunk it's so, a whole movie <laughs> yeah the only reshoot i did was uh they flew me to la for one day and i did a bunch of promo shoots and stuff um so if you see like uh, like a lot of the social media marketing um where it's like kind of shots of the fugitive and he's like kind of posing or like walking intimidatingly uh we did a lot of that in la in a single day and that was really really fun yeah but other than that yeah no reshoots for us and you both attended the la premiere of the film on the 12th uh, now that you've had a chance to see the finished film what did you think of it it's really hard to say honestly because it's like i enjoyed it i actually had a lot of fun watching it <laughs> uh it's definitely like a really fun time in kinetic film um but because we're so ingrained with it i mean i i don't want to speak for kyle but for me it's like i was there from you know before i was there from prep to the end you know i was on set the entire time i read the script three or four times um and then what came out was it was more or less a different film um i mean a yeah. lot of the elements were similar but like there were whole entire characters that were gone. There were whole entire sequences that were gone. There were things that linked to other things that that 
had now just weren't linked to anything. And so it's not like I'm not trying to be like, oh, I was disappointed. Like, no, I wasn't disappointed at all. I mean, I was sad that a lot of the stuff we did was taken out, but that's the business. But at the same time, it's just it's it's hard to say because it's like it's it was a different movie. And um, for what it was, I definitely enjoyed it. But I'll always know what it was going to be. And it's yeah. hard to not compare it to that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's like. It's like it's like making a dish that your grandmother used to make and like you you might you might taste great but you know like you know how those biscuits are supposed to taste. And, and so it just alters it a bit where you're like, "Ah, oh, mm, wonder, I wonder." Um so yeah, I definitely enjoyed the film a lot. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> My mom was she enjoyed it. I brought her to the premiere with me. Um but uh yeah, part of me would always be like, "Oh, I want to see." <laughs> and then there there is like a, a tiny the tiniest of pet peeves for me personally. Um, it's because like I went to school for visual storytelling. I can't not film and think about the story of it. Um, there's this bit that they took out, probably for time's sake, and I totally understand. But they they took out this clip where they show where they got the RV from. Yeah, because the Loonies have that RV. Was it the and Marcus? It's a, yeah, it's a fun scene, and uh, like, it was it's an awesome really, scene. It's a really fun little bit, and it makes the RV feel like this whole character. And I was like, oh no, they took it out. But uh, I mean, I get it. I, like, I'm not trying to say. I could have done that job better. No, not saying that at all, but yeah. Just for our listeners, um, so it makes sense, um, and so you guys can tell me if it's on par with what, <laughs> what I'm saying. Um, in the in the novelization uh, for The Predator, they have the RV as having won it in, um, I think it was a poker game with the bikers at the motel, and that yeah. it was like a, a weapon dealer or something who owned the RV, and that's why it was all stocked up with... Um, you yeah, know, like, the yeah. literally open... The yeah. door, would open the cabinets guns. and guns were just falling out and like and bullets really and gave, mason jars <laughs> um, that really gave his character like more, i felt like that scene missing took away from um alfie's uh, character alfie's character yeah, yeah because he was like the mass and he learned a bunch of crazy card tricks for the film he trained with some master card magician and learned a bunch of these 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 things with cards and he ended up smoking the guy and yeah, I really felt like that that brought a lot to his character, and that was a really fun scene. That I completely agree with Brian is that some of the um, scenes that disappeared were like the connective tissue that explained who these characters were and where they came from and like what they were about. So um, I'm just gonna tie onto that because I don't need to say my whole opinion. on them. It was a lot, and it was a different film in the end than what we started, which is I think can be probably true for a lot of filmmaking. Yeah. So my, I really my was more focused on did we do the job we were hired for? So yes. when I was watching, I was really looking at did we fulfill what what they wanted from the characters of the predators? And I would say yes. So I was satisfied that we we brought characters to the screen. The rest is out of our control. So I'm just kind of like okay, that's filmmaking. Let's go. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. everyone else had a good time we did some cool mm -hmm. character stuff that was it yeah you'll find that uh, your guys's uh, sort of performances is something that's been quite universally praised when it comes to uh, the film you know all all other issues aside editing and whatever it's been really nice yeah nice. so aside from the the emissary predators was there any footage of you guys specifically that um, ended up on the edit bay floor <laughs> me passing out no <laughs> 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 um <laughs> I don't know. Um, honestly, the, most of it made it in from from what I did. Uh, the running made it in, which I was really stoked about. That was really hard. Yeah. <laughs> was like there was this. It, it was the scene uh, where I ran in front of the bus. I remember showing up to set, and they were like, "Okay, do you know what you're doing today?" And I was like, "No." And they're like, "Okay, you see the whole thing here." I'm like, "Yeah." They're like, "You're gonna run it," and I was like, "All right." <laughs> and then we just did it a bunch. Um, there was a little tiny parkour, little little vault I did in the lab escape sequence um, that got cut out, but it's like it probably didn't sell. So and that though, yeah, I'm stoked with everything else that made it in personally. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I, I loved Brian's performance. There was a, a cool little story attached to it, um, where Lance, the the stunt coordinator, gave us kind of an opportunity to do some like visualizing for the lab escape scene where he comes around the corner, and this comes back to that acting thing where I'm like. Yeah, you know, if we picked up a human gun, we wouldn't react like a human yeah. shake with the gun because we're this massive predator and we have so much mass. The gun would almost be like a toy to us. We pick it up, we shoot it and toss it aside. And when I saw how good it looked on film, when Brian came around the corner and he's like escaping and walking like he doesn't give a shit and boom, slays the guy, picks up his gun and the way he swept his arm and shot the guys and then pretty much let go of the gun in the same swing. 
That yeah. was probably one of the most direct training to, to, to final product moments because we were like, yeah, we want these little details to be real. Like, look, we don't shake when he shoots the gun. He just tosses it aside, smashes the glass, pulls out his shit and goes. He's not going to sit there and finick with like, you know, trying to shoot tactically. It's not his weaponry. So that mm-hmm. was really, really cool to see. Could you yeah. just feel the recoil in the in the suits? Because I, I know it's blanks, but I assume I, I assume you feel recoil with the blank guns. That that one particularly that that I whip up that one was a a, a prop gun. Um, but when we shot the big ones like the M240s yeah. and the the 50 cal, yeah, everything yeah. that was cut <laughs> for sure for sure had the recoil. I mean, like so I'm gonna give a lot of props to Kyle actually. So there's a scene where he's like walking around holding the M240, uh, and it's like, it's a heavy gun, man. Like, it's a really heavy gun in the suit, so he has to look like, oh, no, this is light. But <laughs> so yeah. to hold heavy and then try to, like, play it off like it's not, like, that's really difficult. Um, so, yeah, like, things like that for sure. Cool. Um, so, Brian, yeah, yeah. when you're not dressing up and slaughtering folk, you keep, <laughs> you keep busy with art. Would you ever want to work on, uh, with Dark Horse on a Predator comic illustrating <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's that's a tough question. Uh, on the spot. On the spot. The, the predator's hard to draw, man. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, but um, no, that would actually be really cool. I would I would totally love to do something like that in the future, especially when my when my plate clears up. Right now, this graphic novel is taking up all of my time. But uh, no, definitely one day I would love to do like a little predator, like mini comic or something like that. But the thing is, it's like I'm so weird that like I, w- <laughs> I wouldn't even want to do like a like no one would want to read my Predator comic because it'd be like <laughs> it'd be like a sitcom or something with the Predator being like, oh, man, I'm out of milk. I got to get some milk. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Bro. And now that it's all said and done, would either of you like to return someday and portray the Predator in another film? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would love to get a chance to work again with Brian because like that was just the start of what we can create now seeing what is possible. Oh my God. I would love to come back and play. Yeah. I feel the same way. It's, it's like a definite yes. Like for as much as we like to explain to people how like difficult and taxing certain things were, it's just like, it was so fulfilling of an experience. Yeah. And um, I would say yes. in literally a second, if somebody asked yeah. um, to do it. Sweet. Now only one more after this. Um, and I'm sorry, I know it's corny as hell, but I've, <laughs> I've got to ask, <laughs> can you do the Predator impressions? Like uh, like the char- like the actors in the uh, first movie or the Predator himself? The, the, the Predator himself. <laughs> Although if you want to do an Arnie, go ahead and do an Arnie. <laughs> uh, I definitely have tried for many months to, <laughs> to do my best click, and I cannot do it. Uh actually uh jacob trembley who played rory he was really good at it and so there's like all these funny moments of him like trying to teach us how to do it (laughs) and i'm like i can't do it this kid's killing me at it (laughs) uh i would just do a snarl though every time uh when we were in the suit every time they go roll sound and then the bells would go that like signal that we were rolling sound i was just like a yeah. I would like snarl like that that's every not, time. That's not bad. To, to kind of put myself into it, but uh, yeah. c- can never do the exact way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. you, Kyle. Yeah, um, I think the the only one I did was similar to Brian when we go and do the yeah. click. But I tried to do the like sound. You know when that he does target acquisition and he's like, oh yeah, he goes, Wah! yeah, Wah! And that thing. In my audition, I was literally making that sound every time I turned <laughs> and responded to something so i kind of brought that forth into my performance because no one can hear what I'm doing inside the mask when i'm doing it but it kind of made me physicalize it a bit more but as for the impressions like that arnie does i did one on the red carpet and just totally trolled them because they were like you need to get to the chop and i was like excuse me can you get to the chop please <laughs> do you guys know who who actually did the vocals for the predator in in the finished film because i i don't think i've ever actually looked into that I don't actually know. Yeah, they they didn't let us know who does the digital sound. Fair enough. Somebody's talking wasn't it, to find out. Wasn't it that um, it was Peter Cullen, wasn't it? For, for the were? Predator, I mean. Right, that's what I mean. Oh, like, I, d- I didn't know he came back for the Predator. Yeah, that's, that's what yeah, I'm I, saying. So. I'm not actually sure. Yeah. Fair enough, we'll have to actually look that up. 
Uh, Rich Top, do you want to finish us off then? Yeah, so just before we finish, uh, was there anything you guys still want to share? Any anecdotes or anything that we haven't given you the opportunity to? Yeah, I want to say two more things. Uh, one, I wanted to give a special super awesome shout out to the Predator uh, special effects makeup team. Um, yes. Heather, Taryn, Mike, uh, Tibor, Jeff, and there were, there were others too that came and just, they were the ones that helped us get dressed. They were the ones that kept us hydrated. They were the ones that like Mike would paint the suit every day to keep it looking pretty. And they just seriously were kind of like the ones that kind of kept us going. Um, and I really can't thank them enough um, because it was like, it's a team effort and like, yeah, they were definitely part of it. And then obviously, you know, obviously special thanks to like the stunt team and the crew, um, especially the crew, just a lot of, I don't know. It's a, it's a huge ship of people that worked on this thing and yeah. you know, everybody deserves to like all of the credit for it for sure. But yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly would, would say anything more than that. I, I really would like to double up that our, our special effects team, not only did they keep the suit intact, but they kept our minds intact by, um, you know, when, when we needed someone to go to bat for us to make sure we were having our needs met, it was people like Mike and Jeff. They were the always there, no matter what, to make sure that we were as comfortable as we could be um, to do our jobs and, and, and the whole crew too. Like there wasn't one person I met on that set that wasn't stoked to be there. So, you know, as much as I'd like to say, yeah, you know, everyone kills their performances. It's a team effort and it only can become something amazing with a team effort. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Well, that, that's everything we've got for you guys then. And so, um, I'd just like to thank you both for, you know, taking the time uh, wasting the time with, with uh, <laughs> yeah. Ad Adam and myself. I do appreciate that we've had some issues uh, with today, and hopefully the listeners won't really notice that after <laughs> this <laughs> bit. <laughs> so, you know, thank you, thank you both. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening as well. Um, as always, you know, any comments, any questions, um, feel free to throw it up on, um, you know, on our socials, on the forums. Uh, we're on Facebook at uh, Alien vs. Predator Galaxy. Uh, we're on Twitter at AVP Galaxy. Obviously, the website's avpgalaxy.net. And if you like pretty pictures, then we just share pictures on their Instagram, which is Alien vs. Predator Galaxy as well. If you guys want to throw out your socials, where can folk find you online? My website is thebaprince.com. My primary Instagram is thebaprince. My Twitter is the same, thebaprince. My parkour specific Instagram is tall trainings with an S at the end. If anyone wants to see a six foot nine guy jump on stuff and flip over things. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's where you can find me on the internet. Cool. For mine, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, you can just search Kyle Strouts or find me at, at Gino, G E N O 604. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at actor Kyle Strouts. Um, and my website is kstrouts.wixsite.com slash Kyle. Yeah. Otherwise, you can find me. I'm sure you could search my uh, Facebook and find me uh, at actor Kyle Struts as well. So give those guys a uh, a check out and give them a follow. Yeah, and don't friend me on Facebook. <laughs> 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 it's been kind of a problem lately. <laughs> follow the ones given, not the personal Just accounts. Follow, follow the Twitter, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm easy to access on there too. I'll answer any question on Twitter, but people keep friending me on Facebook. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Keep going. Nice. Stage of social media. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I hope everybody's enjoyed this. Uh, this has been Corporal Hicks and Ridgetop. I am Brian Prince, and I am Kyle Strouds. And here is my impression of getting the proper. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kyle, that I was... say so myself. I am pretty that damn good. Was so wow, that was spot on. Kyle, Woo! you are just an acting genius. I think you blew uh, Jacob Tremblay out the water with that one as well. <laughs> oh, man. Brilliant. I ain't got time to bleed. All right, I just really wanted to say that. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys, and uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed it. All right, thanks so much.